Well, good morning, everyone. It's a great uh, joy, and I'm, I'm truly happy and grateful for the opportunity to visit with you in your schools today. And uh, first of all, to greet you. I hope you've had a good day. I hope this school day has been a good one. You've learned some things already, and that it will be a day of growing in knowledge and uh, in faith and hope and love uh, as you go through this school day. Uh, I'm very happy to have the opportunity to be with you because uh, we're, in a few minutes we're going to be able to pray together the rosary. And uh, the month of October is uh, designated uh, by our Catholic tradition and devotion as the month of the Holy Rosary. And the reason for that is that uh, on October the 7th, so actually next Tuesday, uh, we have the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. Uh, that feast comes way back in the 16th century in 1571, uh, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary uh, began uh, under a pope who became a saint, Pope Pius V. And he asked the Catholics to pray the rosary to help in a very, very important battle that was taking place. And um, the people prayed the rosary and the Christian navy was uh, victorious. And the Pope really felt that it was the help of our Blessed Mother who allowed that battle to be won. It was a very critical battle in the history of Europe and in the history of the church. And so uh, from that time on, uh, St. Pius V asked that uh, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary be celebrated. So this is the month of October, next Tuesday, the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And I'd like to just say a little, a few things about the rosary. We're not even certain exactly when the rosary started. We know that it was prayed um, at the time of St. Dominic. Uh, he died around the year 1221. And St. Dominic and the Dominican Order did an awful lot to spread the devotion of the Rosary. Uh, but it was prayed, we know, even before that. It was, however, this Pope, St. Pius V, um, around the year 1568, so a couple years before that important battle, uh, he fixed the Rosary in the form, basically, that we have it today. And so uh, one of the beautiful things about the Rosary, and I just say under two sort of headings, first of all, the rosary is a survey of the gospel. If you think of the mysteries that we pray when we pray uh, the Our Fathers uh, in, the, in the rosary, we're really remembering those important moments in the life of Jesus, in the life of the Blessed Mother, that were integral to our salvation. A and so every time we pray the rosary, we're reflecting really on the message of the scriptures. It's been called by St. Saint John Paul II a compendium, a kind of a survey uh, uh, of, or a digest of the Gospels. That's a beautiful thought. So the prayer, while it is the most famous and widespread devotion uh, to our Blessed Mother, it's a very popular form of uh, Marian devotion, at the same time it is thoroughly, totally Christ-centered as we think about the mysteries of our salvation as we read about them in the, um, the Gospels. So first of all, it's a survey or a digest of the Gospels in the life of our Lord. The second thing I'd like to say about the Rosary is that it's not just a prayer, but if you think about it, it's a school for praying. Because the Rosary uh, involves a variety of different forms of prayer. First of all, there's um, the formula prayers of the Rosary. And you know them, we learn these by heart, we can recite them. Um, and, and so the, the, the prayer that our Lord himself taught us, the Our Father, we pray that in the rosary. We pray the Hail Mary many times uh, in the rosary. In fact, it's thought that um, the praying the Hail Mary 150 times became the way that the common person who in those earlier ages couldn't read um, uh, was sort of imitating the prayers of the monks and the cloistered nuns who could recite and chant the 150 psalms. And so people who couldn't read or didn't have copies of the Bible in those days recited 150 Hail Marys. And, and that was then placing them kind of in communion with the monastic prayers uh, of the church who were praying the 150 psalms. So we have the uh, type of prayer that we call uh, formula prayer. And formula prayers, you know, allow us to pray together. If we were all going to say a different prayer to the Blessed Mother uh, uh, during the, uh, the 50 Hail Marys here, it would sound pretty chaotic. But we have one formula that we all pray, so it allows us to express our unity 
in the body of Christ, something that we do together, that we do in harmony as we pray the Lord's Prayer, as we pray the Hail Mary. And you know that the Hail Mary really comes out of the Scriptures, chapter 2 of St. Luke's Gospel. The Hail Mary is originally the words that Gabriel spoke to the Blessed Mother, and then the words that St. Elizabeth spoke to the Blessed Mother when she came at the time of the visitation. And then we have the second part, of the prayer which emerged in the life of the church and we ask Mary to pray for us. We recognize our failures and we ask her to pray for us always and especially uh, at the hour of our passing, at the hour of our death. Then we pray the glory be, uh, in the, it's another formula prayer uh, where we praise the very uh, inner life of God himself, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And then there's another optional prayer which we will use today and it's called the Fatima prayer or the decade prayer, and that entered the rosary as an option in 1930 by Pope Pius XI. And this was a prayer that our Blessed Mother in her apparitions at Fatima told to the three shepherd children. And she asked them to begin praying that prayer, O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, that well-known prayer, to pray that at the end of each of the decades of the rosary. So that was added to the rosary only in 1930. So we have vocal prayer, uh, formula prayer, th prayers that we, where we memorize and speak with our voice. But the other side of the rosary is the mental prayer or the contemplation that we do. Because as I name the, ro the mysteries today, the mysteries of the rosary, um, we can have a mental image of what it was like when our Lord was baptized by his cousin John in the Jordan. And so we can contemplate or reflect on those mysteries as our voice is saying the the, the vocal prayer, the formula prayers, internally we can be reflecting on the meaning of those mysteries of the wedding feast of Cana and the transfiguration and the institution of the Eucharist. Today we pray um, the mysteries of the rosary that are known as the mysteries of light or the luminous mysteries. And the mysteries of light were added to the rosary only in 2002 by St. John Paul II. He felt that the rosary should include a reflection on the public life of Jesus. We had the joyful mysteries of the rosary, which speak about from the Annunciation, the birth of Jesus, his presentation and finding in the temple. Then we went to the sorrowful mysteries right off, his agony in the garden and his passion and his death. And then the glorious mysteries, the resurrection and what happens with the coming of the Spirit. Um, but Pope John Paul II felt that we didn't reflect enough on the public life of Jesus. And so we added the luminous mysteries, and all of them have to do with our Lord's public ministry during the three years, as they're described in the Gospels, where he preached and taught and healed up until the time of his passion. So we begin his public ministry with the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan. That's the first of the mysteries of light. So I hope uh, what I've been able to share with you is a little kind of uh, a light uh, on, on the history of the rosary and on the rosary as a summary of the Gospels as we pray it, and the rosary as a school of prayer because it includes those different types of prayer that help us grow in our conversation with the Lord. And so I think we're ready now uh, to uh, pray the luminous or mysteries of the rosary or the mysteries of light. <laughs> 